a good God. He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. He said in his word that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always, always be with you in the midst of any circumstances. As we know, God is greater. He is bigger in any circumstances. And you just have to stay in his word and stand in his promises. Amen. And to call upon his name. Thank you, Lord. Well, we want to say good morning again to everyone who is here this morning. We want to say thank you for being with us this morning. We also welcome those who is watching this broadcast online. And we know many of you continually support this ministry, continue to pray for us as we, every day, we pray for every supporter, every partner, everyone who is the part of this ministry and person <coughs> or virtually, we continually pray for <coughs> our partners because we love you. We love you and some of you we met personally and some of you we met through online but our hearts is kneel together because we are about our Heavenly Father's business in this earth. And those who God placed you in the midst of us to be a part of the ministry, part to be a supporters for this ministry, God gonna reward you and abundantly because you obey his call. And his call and this, you, he brought you in the midst of us. He brought you to be a prayer word for that ministry. He brought you to be a financial supporter for this ministry. See, anything that we do for the kingdom of God and obedient to our Father, he will reward you. Because, see, this is a scripture. And the word of God says, if you are willing and obedient, that you will eat the good of the land. Because if we are willing and we are obedient, that we will eat the good of the land. Because God is faithful. He is not a man that he should lie. He, he, what he said in his word, he will confirm his word. Amen. God is faithful. God is continually open the doors for Pastor Larry. And as you know, Pastor Larry, he's been traveling for many years. He was, some of you probably heard that story, how he went years ago to India many times. God placed in his heart love for the, for the India. He's been there multiple times. Then God is open opportunity. He went to, he went even in Russia. He went to Russia and multiple places. Then God opened opportunity for him. He was uh, in uh, Africa, Nigeria, one of the parts of Africa. Then right there before COVID-19 came to in this land, uh, he went to Indonesia and he came from Indonesia and right there that um, uh, the COVID appear in the land. But now God is open another door is for Pastor Larry to travel to Pakistan. God has brought the divine connections with a group of um, anointed and powerful men of God to travel to Pakistan and to reach the souls in the Pakistan. And how many of you know that Pakistan is the major um, percentage of those who live in Pakistan is the Muslim, it's a Muslim country. And God is love Muslims. And he wants to reach that nation and the people, amen. So one of the ministers um, in Pakistan, they already prepare um, 
you know, for the big crusades there, and um, and just continue to pray for that crusade because people out there they they need to experience the presence of God, and you know, and in this side of the country uh, of Pakistan, like I mentioned, it's a and you many of you know that it's a Muslim country, like in the middle of the day. They close the businesses and everybody they all go to mask and pray. So the the laws and, and the lifestyle over there is not like you experience here as the freedom and all of this. So it's a different uh, type of um, you know lifestyle. So and God wants to move by his mighty spirit in this nation and touch people. Amen. And so if you're not able to go yourself, but you know your financial support right. can go there, because you know God opened this door for Pastor Larry to go, and you pray for him, and you also pray and say, Lord, you know, what do you want me to do concerning that? I want to sow the seed, and Lord, what should I sow? Because you know my financial you know, what financially I'm able to do, but you are beyond of that, and so you speak to me, and I will do it. Because everything belongs to God, everything that we have. Our lives belongs to Him, our finances, our businesses. He is the one who brings the increase. He is the one who is our provider. He is the one who is everything to our life. Without him, we can't even wake up. But God is so merciful and gracious and loving to us. Help us to continue to be strong in him and the power of his might. He is the one who renew our strength as the ego. See, God's presence and his power can fill you in such a way like never been before. Even what we see in the midst of the darkness in the land, the God will raise up the standards. He will empower you. He will prosper you. He will give in you a ways where it seems there's no way. Because he is a God of supernatural. Hallelujah. And so we want to say thank you for those individuals and brothers and sisters who already sent some support for the trip for Pastor Larry to go to Pakistan. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. We love you so much and we thank you that you are with us in this. And we pray for those who support that ministry i want to pray for you in the name of jesus heavenly father we thank you so much we thank you father for who you are we thank you father for your people and for every partner every supporter every giver every prayer word everyone who you sent toward us lord as the ministry of the Larry Bergen's ministry and new life in Christ Jesus Church. Father, we speak blessings over your people. We speak favor over your people. We speak the breakthroughs over your people, supernatural turnarounds in their lives. Touch their families. Touch their loved ones. Lord, we proclaim and declare in the name of Jesus. Let every attack of the enemy that come against your people in the name of Jesus, we bind, we loose it, we break it in Jesus' name. And Father, every attack that come against every partner, every giver, every supporter of this ministry that come against their bodies, physical bodies, Lord Jesus, we know that you are the healer and you are the deliverer. And we know that every spirit of infirmity is not coming from you and we cancel. Every spirit of infirmity, every sickness, every disease, we resist you, we command you, go in the name of Jesus. 
Father, you said that your words submit to God. And we submit it to you right now. And Father, you said in your word, resist the devil. And we resist every spirit of infirmity. We resist every sickness. We resist every disease. We resist every spirit that is not of God that come against God's people. And we come and you go in Jesus' name. And God's word says that he will flee. And Father, we thank you that every sickness flee. Every disease flee. Every infirmity flee. Every spirit of poverty flee. Everything that is not of God flee. Flee. Flee in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you. We apply the blood of Jesus over your people. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cover your people. We thank you. We thank you, Father, for the restoration in the people's minds, in their eyesight. In their hearts and their, and their emotions, families, relationships that be restored. And Lord, we're giving you praise. We break every generational curses right now in the name of Jesus. We release the blessings of God. We release the blessings of God. Blessings in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Touch your people right now in the name of Jesus. Touch your people, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We call on you in the restoration. Restoration. Restore. Restore. That whatever Satan did for evil in their lives, Father, restore. Turn around in the name of Jesus for your glory. That your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus. You are God who is able to do abundantly above more than we even think or imagine. And Father, we're giving you praise. We're giving you glory. We're giving you praise. We're giving you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. It is a power in the name of the Lord Jesus. Power in the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Well, Pastor Larry is here. He's going to be ministering to us. So just get ready to receive food, spiritual food. Receive into your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Turn my mic down. All the way up to one, all the way across. The first one over there. The very first one. Okay. Okay. Still kind of buzzing. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of you today. Thank you for coming and thank you for joining us by the internet. Amen. We believe we serve a good God. Y'all believe that too? Amen. I do too. I tell you what, I believe we serve a good God, and He's able to do exceedingly abundant above all we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Glory to His name. Amen. And so, I want to just go ahead on and just, uh, you know, we started on this message of uh, first of the year, God gave us this message. And I believe when he gave me this message, I believe God deals with our hearts and he's calling the church back to righteous living, righteous and holy living. And, and that don't mean you have to be all goofy. <laughs> it means that you're going you're gonna to live a moral and, and, up, and upstanding life. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for 
this opportunity that you have allowed us to come together. God, I thank you for your word that will go forth in this place today. Father, I ask you that you would, that you would, oh God, just supernaturally speak to my heart. Crown my head, crown my, crown my head with, with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Yeah, oh God, help me to say what you would have me to say. Yeah, help me to declare what you would have me to declare. Anoint me to speak your word that every ear would, that have an ear would hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Lord, let everything that was hinder the people from hearing, let it be moved now in, in the name of Jesus. I cancel every blockage. I cancel every demonic argument. I break it right now in the spirit, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask you that you would visit us today Amen. by the power of your spirit. Let your glory fill this house. Oh God. Oh, I thank you. Thank you for it, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, glory. Amen. Amen. I sense the presence of God moving in this place already. You know, God is, he's so good. He's so good. When we started this message, you know, I was looking mostly at my own life when God gave me this message because I know that in order to operate in the realm of the Spirit of God that He would have us to operate in, we have to be totally surrendered, totally emerged. Amen. Everything that shouldn't be in your life, He wanted moved. And I know that when we started this message, there was going to come obstacles in the spiritual realm because. When you start talking this type of message, the devil, this is the reason why the devil uh, 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 came against the church of God in the Garden of Eden. Because they were commanded to be like God. You know, they were created in the image of God and like God. In other words, they were created as God. God is what? God is holy. Amen. And so the enemy came against Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden because of that very fact. And then God dealt with man's heart because of the disobedience. Because they did not do what he asked them to do. In other words, God called us to be holy and at the same time when you come to God, when you begin to experience his goodness, when you begin to experience his mercy, when you begin to experience his love, I mean he didn't have to but he did. He loved us when we didn't love ourselves. He loved us so much that he wanted to redeem us back to himself after man fall. And how did he redeem us back to himself? He loved us so much that he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to send my own son, my, my dearly beloved. Amen. And so God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish. Or not come under condemnation. Or not come under the world's judgment. And this is what God has given us today, folks. God has given us a, 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 a He's given us a what a, a chance. He's given us an opportunity to return to Him with our whole heart, with our whole heart. Yes. We've made many mistakes. If you're a human being, you make mistakes, and a lot of you have not even repented of the mistakes that you made. You're still dealing with those mistakes. You're still living in those mistakes. And you're not even examining your heart. And you're thinking that everything's going to be all right. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. And I believe that God, that we serve, he's calling us back to himself. And if you believe that, let me hear you say amen today. Because amen. I believe that God is bringing us back into a position where his word will really mean something in our hearts. 
Because so many people take his word for granted these days. Amen. They talk, they, they talk about God like, like he's just somebody that they go around every day. They, there's no reverence. They don't have no fear of God. They don't, they don't reverence God. They don't honor God. Amen. Just like in the church. This church is a holy place. It's not a place to play games. It's not a place where you where you where you where you uh, uh, hold, hold conversation when the when the man of God is 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 uh is is is, is, is releasing the word of God, is speaking the word of God. Because it interferes with the anointing that disrespect God. That is disrespect to God. Amen. Now you say that you are children of God, you say that you love God, but your respect for God is yet to be seen in a lot of our lives. God expects us, when we come into his house, God expects us to come to acknowledge him, come to seek him, come to honor him, come to worship him, come to uh, a fellowship with him. God created man to fellowship with. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of uh, Exodus, I think chapter 19, <clears throat> chapter 19, I think, yep, in verse number 2. <clears throat> Shut that out of our kill. Am I in the right place, Lord? Chapter 19. That's not it. Give me a second. Because God is, God wants us, God wants us to be precise. And like I said, I asked him to let me, don't let me say something that I should be saying. Only the things that the Leviticus 19. Thank you, Lord. Leviticus 19. That's it. Thank you, Lord. He brought it back to my memory. Leviticus 19, verse number, verse number, verse number one and two. He said, And Moses spake unto, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the churches of Israel. And say unto them. Now see, now this wasn't the New Testament. This was the Old Testament. But God is still God of the Old Testament and of the New Testament. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's still God. He don't change. He says, speak unto all the congregation of the church of Israel and say unto them, ye shall be what? Holy for I the Lord your God am holy. Amen. And I like verse number three. And ye shall fear every man. His mother, his father, his, and keep my statue, my, my Sabbath. And I, I am the Lord your God. Turn ye not unto idols. Don't let something take your undivided attention. Amen. When things begin to pull at you, when things begin to mess with you, when things begin to try to pull against your mind, and you know it's not from God, then that an attack of the enemy. Why? Because you are when you begin, when you make up your mind that you're gonna draw close to God, that you're gonna that you're gonna uh, do your best to live a righteous and holy life. That's when the enemy go to attack in your mind. And you might have done some things in your past that you're not happy with. Amen. And then all of a sudden, because you make a decision that you're going to live for God, you're going to, you're going to do the right thing, that you're going, to, you're going to live a clean life and a holy life, he's going to bring it up your past. Try to get you to, to, to lose sight of what God is currently speaking to your heart. Because if he can get you off God, if he can get you off track, he can, he can detour you back into your old lifestyle that he can control you. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you see, 
when I when I when, when God gave me this message to begin to 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 uh, return uh, uh, to righteousness and holiness. I'm going to tell you something. My mind came on a, 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 an attack. And I, and I still deal with it every day. Because the devil doesn't want this message to register in the heart of his people. And you know why? Because he knows the moment this message begins to register in your heart, you're going to walk in authority like you never walked before. You're going to walk in the power of God like you never walked before. You're going to be able to uh, discern like you never discerned before. Why? Because you're dealing, because you're walking in the spirit of God. Yeah. You're walking in the spirit of God, and this is where this is where the world is going to be looking at you, and you're going to have the answers. Because you're not going to be one of them uh, walking in fear. You're going to walk by faith, not by sight. You're going to walk in the spirit. Amen. You're going to walk in the spirit. God said to us to be holy, for he is holy. Amen. To be holy for he is holy. And sometimes we have to figure out well, what that means. That means I got to watch what kind of clothes I wear. Well, God wants you to dress modestly. Yes, that's, that's, but that's not what he's referring to. When God's talking about being holy, he's not telling you to rent your clothes. He's telling you to rent your heart. Amen. Rent your heart, not your clothes. Amen. And so now when we get, when we look at this message, we can see what we can see that God is looking at us right where we are, amen, and not where we want to be. He's looking at us right where we are, not where we, not, not where we want to be, because we want to be, I want to be, I don't know about you, but I, I, this year, I want to draw closer to God than I've ever drawn before. That's my heart's desire, folks, is to draw closer to God. My heart desires to know him. Yeah. Amen. And to love him, to honor him, to respect him, amen. And in and, and every day, when I, and every day as I as I come to this place, every day as I come to to this, you know, I've been reading the book of Hebrew lately. The book of Hebrew is a. That's, I'm telling you, I got to go back and read it again. It 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 is so 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 powerful. I've read, it's been so long since I read the whole book of Hebrew, and, and let me tell you, it brings out a lot about what I'm talking about right now. And that's why it took me the chapter 9, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, it took me, it took me like, because I had to go back over them. <laughs> I had to read them over, because it kept, every time I read it, just like, God, I don't, I, I gotta go back and do it again. Amen? Because it's speaking, and, and 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 I don't want to miss what he's saying, so I go back and read it again. You know there's no cloak for your sin right now. If you're born again, child of God, you God, God is giving you He's giving you everything that you need to know and to understand because see, He's want us, He's wanting us to examine our own hearts. He wants us to turn away. He wants us to walk before him. Amen? When you talk about, when you talk about fear of the Lord, sometimes you get, you, you, when you talk about walking before God and, and, and with the reverence of fear, uh, sometimes people, they get, they, they get kind of scared and think, is he going to hit me or something? Gonna, what's going to happen, you know? You're going to send a bulk of lightning down? <laughs> no. God is not going to do that to you. God is merely asking you to be the man or the woman he created you to be. Remember he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26, and God said, let us make man 
in our image and after our likeness. God wants you to be like him because he created you in the same class that he is in. Amen. Glory to God. The fear of the Lord is the, found, is, the, is the fountain of life. Amen. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27. The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. To depart from the snare of death. Amen. See, if, you're going to, if you fear the Lord reverently, he's going to, God's going to protect you in the face of death, especially premature death. Amen? When the enemy comes against you, God is going to raise up a standard. Why? Because God loves you. God created you. And he wants you to know that you are not alone. Amen? In this proverb, the fear of the Lord is, is, is mentioned at at least about 15 times, according to the wise. It is the only source of wisdom, knowledge, discretion. Truthfulness, pureness, and righteousness. The fear of God enables us to live a godly, holy life. In, in a sinful world. How many of you know that this world we're in is sinful? And everywhere you look, you see seduct seductive spirits on people. And if you're walking with a familiar spirit, that thing will jump at you. That's why God wants us to be holy. He doesn't want us to be subject to these demonic spirits that is operating in the world. If we would draw close to God, your destiny would become more brighter than you ever can imagine. Because you're not walking in alignment with the world. Now the world is going to obey man. The world is going to obey uh, the voice of, 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 of man. Amen. Because man has is set himself up as such where the world will listen to him. Amen. But I was talking to my wife the other day and she was telling me about the, 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 the people being set up for the mark of the beast. Amen. She was telling me about some countries already that's already taking the mark. They don't have to, they don't have to take their wallet with them or nothing. They just have them scan their hand or, or their forehead. What what do they what do they what do they require of you right now when you go in, into dentist office when you go into hospitals when you go into places of business what do they require of you they want to scan you right check your temperature. they want to check your temperature they're gonna scan they're gonna check your temperature that's that's that, that, that's conditioning your mind to be scanned yeah. <laughs> they recondition your mind yeah. and they have you and they and they and they and they tell you. Except you take this this this, this vaccine, you won't you, you won't be able to, to buy it. You won't be able to go nowhere. What are they doing? Mandate. They ask. They isolate you. They and and see God has called us back to Him because see when if we will obey God, we will walk with God. Yes. God yes. is going to protect you when in the time of trouble. Because I'm telling you, for we live in the last days. And God is bringing us back to himself so that we can be led by the Spirit. Because see, when, when, when the enemy comes, when the enemy's headed your way, don't you know that God has the ability to speak to your heart and say, I don't want you to go there today. I want you to go over here. God can redirect your steps. Yes. Amen. But when we are going in line with whatever the world is doing, whatever the world is saying, we're saying, God, I know what you're saying, but, the, but man is telling me to do this. And you notice, even in the church houses, they had you to scan the head. <laughs> they prepared, they prepared the people to scan them, you know. 
And he said, I want you to sit six foot, six, six foot apart. <laughs> Let me get off of that. But I want you, I just have to bring that up because, because this, this is what I see. The world is being conditioned yes. and reconditioned to refuse God. Yes. The world is being conditioned to turn their back on God. And when a righteous nation turn their back on God, the wrath of God is coming. And that's why God said, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal the land. God wants to bring healing to our land, but the church must return to righteousness and holiness. Amen. See, we are a people that's been called out. We are a people that have been separated. We are a people that have been set apart for the work and for the purpose of God and God alone. And the enemy is doing everything he can. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna say it like this. The devil is doing everything he can to bring you and me under his subjection. And to whom we yield to, to whom we become the servant of. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. Folks, God is. God is a jealous God. Yes, he is. God is a jealous God. Amen. When we talk about goodness, the goodness of God, we're literally, we're literally talking about the reverence and the fear of God. Amen. But when we, but when we, when we uh, take it lightly, it's just like. A slap in God's face. So we need to get our hearts in the right place with God, folks. We need to we need to allow God's word to penetrate our hearts. Amen. The fear of the Lord is is it. Let me just look. Let me just look at this scripture right here. And this is what I think it is. I'm gonna, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. So I can bring you over there and let you read it with me. Amen. Thank you, Lord. There we go. Okay. Uh, uh, Job chapter 29, verse... Job chapter 28, verse, verse 28. Job 28, 28. And it says, and, and unto he, and unto he, unto, unto man, he said, behold, the fear of the Lord is what? Wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding to depart from evil is understanding I'm going to read it again and unto man he said behold the fear of the Lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding Amen. You see, God knows exactly how to direct us. He knows exactly how to deal with us. But are we willing to allow him that privilege? Because we've been so self-sufficient. We think, anyway. We've been so caught up in ourselves. We've been so motivated by things that we've lost sight of God 
we've lost sight of his calling that's on our lives. And we're living a life that has been defiled by the way of our lifestyles. Because we've not lived a life that was pleasing to God. And God is calling us back into right alignment. He's called us back into right alignment because of the way he's bringing, the way, he, the, the thing that he's about to do in the world, he's going to need the church to be the church and not having one foot in and one foot out, not being straddled of fence. God said in the book of Revelation, I'd rather that you are heart are cold, but, but because you need the heart nor cold, and because you're lukewarm, I will spew you out. He's given us choices, folks. He's given us choices. And we are the only one that's going to be able to take that choice to heart. Today there is a A cry in the spirit for the church to return to righteousness and holiness. Amen. Y'all, are y'all all right today? Y'all pretty quiet, I just <laughs> Amen. I know this is not a this is not something that that, that uh, everybody want to hear, but this is very needful. This is very needful because of the because of the change that that we're coming into. Amen. And God wants us to God don't want us to be caught up, and, and He wants to be He wants to. Be right with him. Let's look at first, first Peter. God, I can't get my, I can't get away from it. First Peter. And look at chapter two. First Peter chapter two. And notice what he says right here, verse number one. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guilt and hypocrisy and 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 va and and, and, and what that word evil and, and envy yeah envies and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby if so be that if so be ye have tasted notice what he said now if so be that ye have tasted the Lord, if so be that ye have tasted, and that the Lord is what? Gracious? To whom coming as unto a lively stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stone, living stone, lively stone, are built up a spiritual house. Notice what he said and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifice. See, this is what God is bringing us. He wants bring, he bring us back to this, to, 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 to our rightful calling because we are priests. We are kings and priests. Amen. And God is bringing us back to this state because notice what he said right here. Notice what he's saying. Because you need, you need to understand what God is saying to you. Amen. Verse number, verse number, verse number five. He said, "Ye are a, li a lively stone, a build up a spiritual house and holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifice 
acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. When you come to God, when you present your body to God, the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number, verse number one, said, I present my body, I, I, I present my body to you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. See, God is not going to present your, your body to him. This is something that we have to do, and this is something we have to be willing to do. Because, see, God expects us not, not only to present our bodies to him, but God wants to lay down our life before him. Amen. He wants to lay down our life before him. So I present my body to you, Father, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is my reasonable service. Amen. And I like what it said verse number two, it said, and be not conformed to this world. Because if I'm not being conformed to this world, then I'm being separated from this world. I'm being set apart from this world. If I'm, but if I'm being conformed to this world, that means I'm going right in alignment with the world. But if I be, if I, but if I be not conformed to this world, and according to the word of God, sanctification is set apart. Amen. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, uh, not wear makeup doesn't mean you don't have to wear a, a lipstick or whatever. Amen. It means that you are set apart. Amen. You set apart for what? For God's purpose. For God's use. Amen. So now, so now he said, "I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service." Verse number two said, "And be not conformed to this world." But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yes, amen. Amen. When we are, when we're living for God, when, we, when, our, when our hearts is in tune with God, God is going to bring us into that place. Notice what it says in verse number, verse, number, verse number six. Wherefore, also it is, it is content, con it is, it is content in the scripture, contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious. And he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. See, as you begin to walk right before God, God is not going to allow you to be confounded. You know what's going to cause you to be confounded? When you act like you don't know him. When you know him. When God gives you instructions and he tells you don't fear this, don't, don't, don't be confounded by their face. Don't let their faces cause you to fear back, to cause you to draw back. Amen. Because if you do, then what you are afraid of is going to come upon you. You see, when God gives us commission, when God gives us commandment, God has picked us to carry, carry it out. Amen. And he's telling us right now, He's telling us right now. Notice what he's saying right in verse number 6. Notice what he's saying. Amen. This is New Testament. This is not Old Testament. This is New Testament. Wherefore also it is contended in the scripture. Contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a cornerstone, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Shall not be confounded. Amen. Glory to God. I don't want to be confounded. And I don't want you to be confounded. I want you to do what God called you to do. I want you to be what God created you to be. I want you to be the person God created you to be. Amen. I want you to stand before God. And recognize that he is the supreme source of all supplies of all the earth. And of all the world. Amen. And all the universe. Because he created it all. Verse number 7 says, unto, unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of, a, of stumbling. And a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even to them which stumble at the word. Even to them that this that do not believe the word. 
being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Look at verse number nine. Very important. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Glory to God. And a holy nation. He didn't call you a, 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 a righteous nation. He called you a holy nation. Amen. A holy nation. Look what he says here. Because he's talking about you and me. He's talking about you and me. He, he, when, we, when we return to righteousness, when we return to holiness, we return to the place of separation. Separation for what? Separation from the world. Set apart. Being the people that God created you to be without hypocrisy. Not, not being afraid. Yes. Amen. Amen. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. See, this is what God see you. This is what God see me. Amen. But the world wants us to honor their conditions. God has called us out of the world. We are in this world, but we are not of this world, folks. The Bible tells us that we've been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Far above all principalities and powers and mighty dominion. And the book of Ephesians. Amen. But notice what he said, but you are a chosen generation. This is what God called you a chosen people. You see, you could be, you you could have, you could have, uh, you could still be walking around as the world. You could still be living as the world. You could be living whatever lifestyle you want to, but you, one day, you heard the gospel. You heard the good news. You heard the spirit of God wooing at your, speaking to your heart and, 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 and calling you. And, and, and you felt impressed to yield, to turn, to, to try to understand what was being said. And all of a sudden, he got your undivided attention. And you accepted when he called you, you accepted. And then you not only accepted, but you agreed to invite him into your heart. You agreed to be his subject. You agreed to be his servant. You agreed to be his child. You wasn't forced to be it. You had a choice. We had a choice. The devil is trying to take that choice from you. He doesn't want you to, to, to walk in the provision of the Lord. He wants you to walk as people of the world. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you. Notice what he said now. Who have called you from what? Out of darkness. The Lord. Out of darkness. Glory. Oh, glory to God. No more You've been called. You've been separated. Amen. As a, as, as a chosen people, you've been called out. You've been called out. You are no longer a child of darkness. You are a child of the light. Thank you, Lord. You are a separated one. You Amen. are a child of, of, of God. You Amen. are a child of the creator of all the universes. Amen. You are a child of the creator of the world. You are a child of that created that God had created you in his own image and after his likeness. He placed a part of himself in you so that you would not struggle to serve him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. He's calling us, folks. Amen. He's calling us to himself. He's calling us.
called us back into righteousness and holiness. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. I like this, what he said right here. He said, he said that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Oh, glory to God. See, we were sometimes darkened. Amen. We were sometimes darkened. We walked in darkness. We Everything we did was part of darkness. But when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we opened up our heart to, to acknowledge him as our, as our soon coming king, we acknowledged that we would live for him also. And some of us said, some of us made this statement, Lord, whatever you say, go, I'll go. Whatever you say, I'll, I'll say it. Whatever you say, do, I'll do it. Some of, some of us have made that statement to God. And, and then when it was time to, to act upon that statement that we made to, toward God, amen, that we, that, 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 that we, 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 we withdraw. We withdraw. Why? Because we don't want to offend no one. Would you rather for them to go to hell? Don't allow your neighbor, your friend, to go to hell when you have the answer. So what if they don't want to hear it? Tell them anyway. At least their blood won't be required on your, on your shoulder. On your hand. Tell him anyway. Yes. Yes. Because if you don't, when God tell you to tell them and you don't tell them, their blood is on your hand. And I like this what verse number eleven says. Which in some time, which in some time, which in some time past were not a people. See, when you're walking in darkness, you are not a people of God. You are a people, but you're not a people of God. Amen. But are now the people of God. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained it mercy. Amen. See, the mercy of God right now is, 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 is resting. Amen. Verse number, verse number 11 said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lust oh my god they got mad at me <laughs> <laughs> glory to god yeah They don't, they don't want this message to get out. Y'all got to excuse me for a minute. I'll be right back. Yeah. Not be completely out there. That is not good. Oh, shut out of the box. Are y'all getting anything out of this message today? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I swear to God. I tell you what I am. Praise God. Praise God. getting everything up and running this morning.
know what that means? That means that my program okay. down now. that much longer. Cause I've, uh, it's, I, I've, I've, we've been here uh, Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Well, glory. <laughs> amen. Well, I just want, you know, because when we uh, when we started this message, it was not something that I really wanted to preach. It was something I had to preach. Amen. It was something I had to preach and 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 to uh and to come back to this, you know, to come to this 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 stage in life, this place in life, it means that uh to me, God is showing me that if we're gonna accomplish what he wants us to accomplish as a church then we must all have a, a heart to return. To return is not grievous. It's not, it, might, it, might, it might work against your flesh because your flesh enjoy life as it is. <laughs> I know. Your flesh don't want to, your flesh don't want to move. Your flesh, and your flesh is content. But God said for us to draw nigh to him, and he will draw nigh to us. And the Bible tells us in the book of Malachi, chapter chapter 3, can I take you there real quick? God called us to return to him. Amen. In Malachi chapter 3, he said, verse number 6, and he said, return, turn, turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to, to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Is that Malachi 3.6? And then, huh? Is that Malachi 3.6 for us? Well, I'm, no, that was, that was chapter 4. <laughs> hey, yeah, I know what you're saying. Amen. But he said... <clears throat> it says right here verse number verse number six. I'm gonna read right here verse number six again. But chapter three, he said. Are you there now? Amen. Amen. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are consumed, are not consumed. Even from the days of your Father, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. 
But you see, when shall we return? God is calling us back into right relationship, right standing. Amen. He calling us back into reverence. Calling us back to acknowledge. To acknowledge his goodness, his mercies. For his mercies are renewed daily. Amen. Now let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse number, verse number 18, I think. And we're getting ready to put it away. Just give us a minute. 1 Peter chapter 2. Look at verse number 18. Servant, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. For this is thanksworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering, wrong, wrongfully. For what glory is it if when he for, if when ye were buffeted for your for your fault ye shall take it partly, but if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take a ye take it partly, patiently. This is acceptable with God. Look at uh, Romans chapter thirteen. Romans thirteen. And verse number seven. Render therefore to all men to all their due. Tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom is due, fear to whom fear is due, honor to whom honor is due. He's still talking about the fear of the Lord and honoring God. Amen. Be subject to one another. That's right. In the fear of the Lord. He's still talking about the honoring of God. Hallelujah. Oh my God, my God. My God, my God, my God. Shatala. Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 40, 43. Acts 2, 43. Right before Romans. Acts 2, 43, and it reads, And fear come, and fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. That's right. When you when you operate in the when you operate in the, in the in the area that God's called you to operate in, you are you come. I mean, you are, you you walk it in the spirit. He said, and all that believe it were together, and and had all things common. Amen. So we see that the the power of God and the anointing of God is revealed when the people have a reverence of God. They have a fear of God. Amen. Not a a, a, a scared fear, but a a reverence fear, a healthy fear. That's right, a healthy fear. Amen. And then let's look at one more. Let's look at Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, verse 17. <clears throat> Acts 19, 17. <clears throat> and, 
and this was and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was what? Magnified. The name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Amen. When you walking in reverence, when you walking in fear, when you honoring God, you open up the door for the the signs, wonders, and miracles to come forth. Amen. God is calling the church back into a state of reverence and fear. <laughs> Woo. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. See, when we come back, when we when we do that, when we see what God is doing, and when we understand how, what He what He the way He's leading us and guiding us, folks, it's going to cause us to experience the goodness of God. Amen. It's going to cause us to experience the goodness of God because when we when we are when we begin to experience in our own life His presence because of our attitude toward Him, our attitude toward Him is going to change. You know what I mean by attitude toward Him. You know I I know I, I know God, but you know what. I, I like this person, and I'm going to, I'm going, oh, I know it's wrong, but God, you got to forgive me this time. See, that's, that's, that, you, see, you already given in to a seducing spirit. Right. Amen. So God is going to look at you, and he's going to, and he's going to, and you're going to be judged because of your yielding. That's why God don't want us to yield to demonic spirits. God wants us to yield to the spirit of the living God. God wants us to be separated. And then we showed us in 1 Peter chapter 2 He's called us a, a holy nation a peculiar people. Amen. And he, he, he set us, he, he set us from, from darkness to light. And we need to understand what God is doing because in doing so we're going to experience his goodness. His goodness. Amen. And so can I show you another scripture? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. Now notice what it says, right? First Corinthians chapter 2 says. Verse number one, and I, brother, when I came to you, came not with excellent of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Verse number three. Okay, see, there was there was a there was a good reverence fear that he was that he was operating in right there when he when he spoke that. Now look at verse number three. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in fear and in much trembling. Amen. I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my and my speech was not and my speech excuse me. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's what? Wisdom. But in the demonstration of the spirit and the and of power. That's what happens when we walk in the fear of God. The power of God is available. The anointing of God is available. The, 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 the miracles begin to take place in the lives of the people. Amen? The miracles begin to take place in the lives of the people. Why? Because they honor him who have called them out of darkness. They honor him. And then that and even though even though they 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 they're still they're still having difficulties in area because see, just because God called you out of darkness doesn't mean the darkness is gonna stop messing with you. Amen. Don't mean that you're gonna have it easy. You still gonna to have to fight the good fight of faith. You still gonna to have to lay hold to eternal life. Amen. You still gotta work out your own soul salvation. Amen. 
regardless of what it looked like, you are still reliable to God to separate yourself, to come out from among them. You, me, we all. We can go out, we can disobey God, we can do what our flesh tells us to do, and we're going to pay a price for it. Go pray a price for it. Amen. But if you go ahead, if you go ahead and honor God, if you go ahead on and do what God called you to do, if you go ahead on and follow him righteously, amen, you're going to walk in authority. Glory. Behold, I give unto you power yeah. to tread over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Well, what power? Power to tread over serpents and scorpions over all the powers. Amen. Amen. God is not going to leave you confident. He's going to be with you. He's going to walk with you. He's going to carry you through whatever the situation that you're facing. God is going to walk you right through it. You're not going to be up, you're not going to be detained by it. Amen. You're not going to be detained by it. He's going to walk you. He's going to walk with you. Amen. Yes. Oh, shout out of our Thank you, Jesus. Thank mm. you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. I'm I, 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 I'm feeling this message, folks. I told my wife, I said, honey, this message is this message is more for me than for anyone else. Amen. Why? Because I'm a, I'm I'm one of them that stand behind the pulpit. I'm one of them that that is directing people. And if I I got to get it right, if I don't get it right, then how am I going to get you to get it right? How can I get the mold out of someone else's eye when that's, when it, when it, when it, when I got to get a beam out of my own eye? Amen. So God is looking at where we are, but he's also urging us to come forth. He's also telling us to put aside your differences. Lay aside every weight and every sin which does so easily beset you. And run this race with patience, looking unto Jesus as the author and the finisher of your faith. Amen. God don't want us to be bogged down. God doesn't want us to give up. God doesn't want us to give in. God wants to run. He wants to run with patience. Amen. He wants to run with patience. Amen. Fear God to fear God is to, to depart from evil. To depart from evil. Amen. You know when you fear God, you're going there's a spirit of sanctification that's going to start rest upon you. And in that you will find that the nature and the characteristics of Jesus Christ is going to begin to surface. When you, when you yield to a, 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 a holy and, and a sanctification life, sanctified living, amen, you're going to find that in doing so, that the characteristics and the nature of Christ is going to begin to surface. It's in you right now. But because you have not yielded to these areas or to the word of God in these areas, it, he's just been lying dormant. But when you start yielding to these areas and start yielding to the word of God concerning these areas, you're going to find that the characteristics, which is love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, temperance, long suffering, patience, faith, amen, going to begin to rise up within you. Then you're going to also find that the gifts of God, the nine gifts of God are going to begin to rise up, going to begin to rise up because this is his character. This is his nature. When you yield to God in such a way, you're saying, God, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? You are a product of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Well, I'm going to stop. I, 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 I finished my course <laughs> for the day. <laughs> I'm not done by a long shot, but I, 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 I'm going to I'm going to hold fast right now. I'm going to stand, I'm going to stand still right now.
Amen. Father, I declare that what you placed upon my heart for today. And I have opened up my heart and I have gave the people that what you gave me. And as I presented it to them, it was also an invitation for me. For we all have sinned and have come short of your glory and have not been able to carry out the assignment that you have given us. But as I said early this year, Father, my heart desire is to draw closer to you, to lay aside everything that would hinder, block, or stop that from happening. Therefore, this message was birthed in my spirit. And I not only, I not only declare it to your people, Lord God, but I declare it to they that have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to their own hearts. Let them hear. And as they hear, and as they honor you, and as they walk upright before you, as they turn from their wicked ways, to serve the true living God, God, you're going to crown them with love and kindness. You're going to crown them with righteousness. You're going to seal them with holiness. And that enemy, the devil, that wants to defile your people will have no access, Father, because you will have sealed them with the holy seal of promise. Father, I thank you for it in advance because you, in you there's no shadow of turning. You are God. You are the one true God and you cannot lie. What you have said, you are able to bring it to pass. So we humble ourselves before you this day and we surrender our hearts, our minds, our will, our emotions. We surrender. We lay our life down at your feet, Lord Jesus. And we're asking you, Lord God, to work on us. Work on us. Let us be changed, Lord God. Let us be changed. Let us be transformed by the power and the authority of your word, Lord God. Let us not desire to live as we have lived. Oh, God, but let us be changed. Let us be changed. God, I thank you. Let our hearts be regulated by the power of the word. Let our minds be cleansed by the washing of your word. Oh, God, let us be the men and the women that you created us to be from the foundation of the world. Let us not take this day and, and thinking that it was just another service. Lord, let this service register in our hearts as one that can make a difference. Can bring about that lasting change. God, we want to be changed. We want to be changed, Lord God. We want to be, we want to be changed. We want to be, we want to be more into your image, Lord God. We want to be changed more into your image, transformed more into your image, Lord God. Let the spirit of righteousness and holiness rest upon us like never before. Let our minds, let our minds stop wondering. Let our minds stop wondering. Let our eyes stop looking at things that we shouldn't look at. Let our ears not hear those things that we shouldn't hear. Let us put a guard over our, uh, our eyes and a block over our ears so we will not hear. That we will not see those things that will defile us. That will cause us to, 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 to turn and look the other way. God, we want to be changed. We want to be changed, Lord God. 
You're a holy God. And you call us a, a holy people. A chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God, you called us this. Let us see ourselves this way. We can't do it in our own strength, Lord God. We need more of you in our hearts. We need more of you in our lives. God, we need you in these last days. We need you. We need you now, Lord God, more than ever. The world is trying to sift us as we. Give us the power to stand, Lord God. Give us the power to stand against the, the powers of darkness. Give us the will, Lord God, to pursue righteousness and holiness. God, we can't do it in our own strength. We need you, Lord. We need you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Oh, we need you. More than ever. More than ever, Lord, we need you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I need you, Lord. I don't know about everybody else, but I need you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go ahead and prepare our offering for today. Hallelujah. Ministries.com. Amen. For those that want to sow a seed today, you can go to my website, labbergministries.com. And for those that want to send you support for the trip to Pakistan next month, when you send when you when you sow your seed, specify it that you sow the seed for Pakistan. We have, I've been, I've been really blessed by people that have been supporting this, this trip. And I believe that we're gonna see the glory of God once we're there. Father, I thank you for this gift. I thank you for this tithe. I thank you for this offering, Lord, that the people are sowing today. Father, there are some people that have, that have never sowed in this ministry before, Lord. And, and God, you're dealing with their hearts because, God, you want to bless them. You want to, you want to bring them to a new level in their finances, God. You want to bring them to a new level in their health. God, I'm, I just thank you right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that, that, you're, that you're speaking to their hearts that you're causing their, their heart to hear what the Spirit of God is saying right now. And Father, and as they sow and as they release that seed, whatever you put on their hearts, God, whatever you put on their hearts, and as they honor you, as they obey you, Father, God, you're going you're gonna to bring them to a new level. You're going to bring them to a new level. And God, your name will be glorified, Father, because they honored you, because they obeyed you. It's not their amount, God. It's their obedience that you're looking at. It's their obedience that you're looking at. Because, Father, many people are, are looking to for ways to grow. And, Father, we know that this is one of the ways we can grow. Because of giving of our finances, we're giving of ourselves. 
we're giving up of ourselves. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless these people. I bless these people, Father. I ask you to do that you will move upon them in a very powerful way, Father. God, let there be no more lack in their life. Let there be no more insufficient in their accounts. In the name of Jesus. And may your name be glorified, Father, because they choose to stop stealing your money, but they chose to give you what belongs to you. And you said that the tithe belongs to you. So, Father, I bless your people. And I thank you, Father, for moving on their behalf. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I want to pray with you. Maybe you have made him Lord of your life, but you you backslid, you, you, you turn away from God, and God deal with your heart. Because God said in the book of Malachi, chapter 3, and verse number 7, He said, return to me, and I will return to you. God is wanting you to examine your heart and see what was it that turned your heart away. And He wants you to examine your heart and he wants you to repent of that because the wrath of God is upon the disobedient. And you rather return to God than to allow the wrath of God to go upon you. So I encourage you by the authority of him who called me. Return to the Lord and the Lord will return to you. If you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, Right now, open up your heart and accept him as your Lord and Savior. If you're one of those that have accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, but you backslid, you turned away from God, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, this is the time that you need to rededicate your life to the Lord. This is your season. This is your day. This is your hour. Right now, that God will demonstrate his glorious power on your, on your behalf. He said, I rebuke the devourer for your sake. Open up your hearts right now and say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. I not only sin against you, but I sin against my own body, my own conscience. Father, forgive me. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit and renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sin. As I confess my sins today, I accept you and I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you said that simple prayer right now, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. Yeah. And God yeah. is saying to you, my child, welcome home. Welcome home. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm here today for you. If you need prayer right now, I pray for you. Anyone need prayer today, I pray for you. Talk to him. I tried to. He did the same thing. He started calling me names. Started coming at me. Okay, let me pray. Thank you, dear. Thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, Father, that you are mindful of my dear sister's heart, of mine. You're, you're mindful of, of the condition of her mind. 
her will and her emotions. Father, you see the turmoil that she's been experiencing lately and, and how it has brought her to a place, Father, where she don't feel comfortable. And now, Father, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus for a supernatural touch from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. Bring that area in her heart where it has been disturbed by circumstances and situations. Father, bring healing in that area of her heart that she will begin to recover and that she will begin to walk in the peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, this is not something that man can do. This is something that only you can do. And so, Father, by the and authority of Jesus Christ, who have called me, I release that anointing now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your healing touch, restoring her mental faculties. I thank you, Father, for healing her heart, the deep wounds of the heart. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, let it be even now. Thank you. And I consider it as done in Jesus' name. And every demonic attack that's coming against her mind or will or emotion, I cancel it now in the spiritual realm in Jesus' name. And I release the peace of God that's a passive all understanding that will keep her heart and her mind in Christ Jesus. That she will think of those things which are good and pure and perfect and loving of a good report. I give you praise. I give you glory for it now, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother and I pray for his family and his uncle's family right now. Father, I thank you, Father, for restoration. I thank you, Father, for healing. I thank you, Father, for peace. I thank you, Father, for salvation for every loved one that he's asking prayer for. In the name of Jesus, I claim their souls for the kingdom of God. And Father, I'm asking for the ministering Angels, the heirs go forth and minister to the heirs of salvation over these families in the name of Jesus. Send forth labors, Lord God, into this harvest field. Bring them into a place of healing, deliverance. I thank you for it right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Minister the angels, go now. And minister to the heirs of salvation of this family. Thank you, Father. I consider this done. Thank you, Lord. Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for all those that are with us by the internet right now. And I ask you, Father, Lord, that you would touch, that you would minister, that you would quicken their spirit to follow after righteousness in every area of their lives. Father, and I know that as they make that decision, God, I'm asking you to protect them. Protect their minds. Protect their emotions. In the name of Jesus. Because the enemy will come against them to try to stop it from happening. And Lord, I'm asking you to put a guard over their hearts. Put a guard over their hearts. And ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God, I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. We appreciate each and every one of you. We love you. Until the next time, we'll see you tonight at 6.30. God bless you.